Hi friends, Willa and I are here to share a story with you about a worm. The title is The Adventure of Willie the Worm. We hope you enjoy it. I miss you. Mm. Willie was a worm. A lovely living red, just like a worm, red worm should be. He was as long as the finger on your hand, your little finger if you're big, and your big finger if you're little. Willie could also stretch himself and crunch, him, crunch himself if he pleased. And he pleased lots. And that is how he moved about stretching and crunching, stretching and crunching, stretching and crunching, stretching and crunching until he got where he wanted to go. Willie had a house. It was the hole in the ground underneath a tree. He had made the house all by himself. He was proud of his hole. He had eaten his way through the soft earth, just like we've eaten our way through a room full of chocolate cake. Willie Worm loved the earth and how it tasted. It was yummy. His whole body was like a big taste bud, all puckered up and juicy and wanting to munch through mealfuls of delicious earth. One morning, after Willie ate his way through a layer of topsoil, he decided to have dessert. He squirmed out of his front door and he began to nibble on a pile of leaves which covered his house. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Suddenly, the leaves were flicked away and a bird with brown feathers and a red breast stared at him with beady eyes. We'll call him Robin, because that was his name. Robin kicked his head sideways and eyed Willie, wiggling and squirming in the bright sunlight, trying to find his front door. Chirp, chirp, said Robin merrily. Chirp, chirp. This meant, look, look, a lovely worm. And he picked up Willie in his beak and flew away. Chirp, 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 chirp. Willie wiggling as hard as he could, but there was no use. Robin held him tight and he couldn't get free no matter how much he wiggled. Robin flew into the tree above Willie's house and landed in a nest. Instantly, three little younglings screeched and cheeked and bogged up and down. They held their mouths wide open, all of them wanting Willie inside their tummies. <laughs> what a racket they made. Willie shuddered as he looked and he sprang into the gaping beaks. The robin dropped Willie into the biggest, loudest mouth of all. <clears throat> oh, how Willie fought. He wriggled and he wrestled as if his life depended on it, which it did. And the little birdie, Freddy, did his best to swallow him as if his hungry tummy depended on it, which it did. <clears throat> but Willie won. He squirmed out of Freddy's beak and fell into the nest. And in an instant, before the chicks could grab him, he wiggled his way amongst the twigs and branches of the nest. All day he lay there, quivering with fear, <clears throat> listening to the loud squawking of the fledglings whenever Robin or his wife, Robinetta, brought food. Finally, night came. Robinetta sat on her nest. And Freddie and his brother and sister, Archibald and Melissa, settled down and were quiet. And Willie waited. He waited as still as a mouse until it was dark and the birds were snoring. Then, slowly, carefully, 
As the birds slept, he silently worked his way out of the nest and onto the branch, and the moon was thin and sharp, a little sliver in the sky, and there was hardly any light at all as Willie crept onto the branch of the tree trunk. He tried to climb he tried to climb down the tree, but it was much too sleep, steep, and he slipped and he fell. Oh, help, Willie whispered as he fell down the trunk. And then he landed, thud, on a pile of leaves. Oof, said Willie, the wind knocked out of him. In a moment, he came to his senses and wiggled his way deep into that pile of leaves quicker than he'd wiggled his whole life. Luckily, there were the very, they were the very same leaves that covered his house. He found his front door and rushed inside out of breath with a huge sigh of relief. Whew. Oof, said Willie. The, after that, Willie kept his head low and he came out at night to eat leaves and grass and such things. Eventually, he met his lovely wife, Wendy, and they had at least a hundred children, all as wiggly as their parents would want them to be. The last I heard of them, the whole family was eating their way towards the compost heap in the corner of the garden. Perhaps you'll meet them there and say hello for me.